it's no secret that all eyes are going to be on the Fed meeting this week, but most people are going to be focusing on the stock and bond markets. However, we are going to be watching commodities. Commodities can and will have an impact based on interest rate policy. Don't forget, commodity prices are highly influenced by action in the currency markets, and obviously the currency markets are going to have something to say about this week's Fed meeting. So don't underestimate the volatility that could be sparked in the commodity markets based on what happens with the Fed. 2019 has not been easy for commodity traders. The commodity markets are dealing with obstacles from multiple angles. For instance, a higher U.S. dollar has put downward pressure on markets such as energies, grains, softs, and even meats. As the dollar weakens, U.S. exports become more expensive to overseas buyers, and this causes them to look elsewhere when purchasing their needs. And also, we don't have to mention, but I will anyway, the U.S. trade tensions and tariffs have disrupted supply chains that facilitated grain and meat trades with China. Those are obviously putting downward pressure on some of the commodity markets, although you wouldn't know it now if you looked at a grain chart. Corn, soybeans, and wheat are all rallying pretty sharply due to weather concerns. And we're also dealing with U.S. shale boom that's resulted in supply gluts in both oil and natural gas. So in a nutshell, commodities are looking pretty cheap overall. And this is even, even w considering the big rally we're seeing in grains, if you look at a commodity index such as the BCI, the Bloomberg Commodity Index, prices are still historically cheap. We are not that far away from the all-time lows that were posted in late 2016, early, uh, maybe early 2016, late 2015. Yet, if you look at a chart, we're tr we should, in theory, be trading in a channel, and the market's supposedly sitting on support. We believe it is, anyway, although we've believed that this support would continue to hold for several months, and it has. However, we've also believed that we'd get some sort of an upswing. But in our opinion, due to the high U.S. dollar, the commodity markets just haven't been able to, to get anything going on the upside. Keep in mind, all else being equal, and that means no fundamental changes in the trade war or anything like that, if the dollar goes down, commodities will go up. It's just how it works. That said, we really need the Federal Reserve to sit on their hands. If the Federal Reserve does, in fact, cut rates, not necessarily this week, I don't think anybody's expecting them to cut rates this week, but if they cut rates as we go on throughout the end of the year, the markets will gradually or maybe even not so gradually lose confidence, and that will put pressure on stocks as well as commodities, in our opinion. If the Fed sits on its hands, which we, is what we believe will happen, but only time will tell. I mean, the way that we're looking at it is we, we have a hard time seeing the Fed make a long-term monetary policy move based on short-term trends and data. I mean, sure, it's obvious that the economy is weakened a little, but we're not in a recession, and Trends change very quickly. We all know that. I'm sure everybody remembers in late 2018 when the markets had the exact opposite opinion. Everybody assumed that the economy was so great that the Fed would actually be raising rates throughout 2019, not cutting them. We'll take a look at a Fed Funds futures chart here, and you can see that the market's been wrong before. We've seen, as I mentioned, December 2018, the Fed funds futures market, which is actually, it's a contract that trades on the CME, by the way, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. It was pricing in several rate hikes by the end of 2019, and we've actually flip-flopped and gone to rate cuts. And that includes a week of parabolic trade at the end of May, early June. In our opinion, reality is probably somewhere in between. We wouldn't be shocked to see the Fed cut rates once throughout the, between now and the end of the year, although we We'd rather see them cut none at all, not because the market doesn't or the economy doesn't wouldn't necessarily benefit from the boost, but we think it might do more harm than good as far as the psychological standpoint goes. That said, if we're right about the Fed fund futures being overbought and the market being overzealous in regards to its predictions and rate cuts, we should see the Fed fund futures creep lower. And in turn, believe it or not, that should push commodities higher. We've noticed there's, been, there's a strong correlation between interest rate products on the shorter end of the curve, such as euro dollars and Fed fund futures 
rates. As they go up, commodities tend to go down and vice versa. So if we get a reversal in this, we think commodities should find a bounce. Going back to the BCI chart, you'll, and this, again, this is the Bloomberg Commodity Index, which by the way, this is a futures contract. It is basically a basket of commodities. It represents about 22 commodities. Of those 22 commodities, it ranges around in, uh, I believe, seven sectors, energies, grains, meats, metals, just about any commodity sector you could think of is included in this index, or at least any that, that matters. It is reweighted and rebalanced so that one particular commodity can't become too overbearing in the index. For example, in 2000. Uh, seven and eight when crude oil was $150 a barrel. Any commodity index that wasn't reweighted was a problem because it was basically like trading crude oil and then maybe a bunch of other things on a smaller scale. So it is rebalanced to prevent that from happening. But the index itself, as I mentioned, is a futures contract. It's a very cheap and low risk way to get into the commodity markets. This is a great product for traders that have never traded futures before because it gives them exposure to the futures markets, which by the way, futures markets is um, probably the, the best game in town when it comes to speculating commodities simply because it's efficient. But the downside is it also comes with leverage and people are scared of leverage for good reason. It can work for you, but it can also work against you. But this particular index or this futures contract is awesome because it does have some leverage built in, but it's not uncontrollable. In fact, the margin's less than $500. You don't make or lose a ton of money either way. For each point that it goes up or down, you're making or losing $100. So if we're right and the Bloomberg Commodity Index does drift higher towards the upper end of the trading range, you can see on this chart is about 94. The, by the way, the Bloomberg Commodity Index is currently trading around 78.80. So if it does drift up to 90s, you could be looking at a profit of anywhere from 1000 to 1400 bucks, depending on entry and you know, assuming that we're correct in our price target. Of course, the downside does have relatively, um, well, theoretically, I should say, unlimited risk. If you go along a Bloomberg Commodity Index and all the commodities in the index go to a value of zero, you're out the total value of the contract, which if, if it's trading at 78, that's $7,800. So if the world comes to an end and every commodity goes to zero, you lose 7,800 bucks, but that's probably not likely. The all-time low is just a few hundred dollars in risk away. So in our opinion, there's a lot more profit potential than there is risk. That said, the, you know, to be fair, we've thought that for several months, and you can see on the chart here, the market really hasn't gone anywhere. But we'd love to see a bump up to 94 and if we break 94 honestly we wouldn't be surprised to see something quite a bit more you'll notice in 2014 this index was trading at, at about 140 so we're currently around 78 80 140 obviously is almost double what it is now so obviously no guarantee that that's going to happen and no guarantee it's we're even going to be right and it goes to 94 but in our opinion it looks like a relatively good risk reward ratio and especially uh, a good pr product for somebody that's never traded futures before to get involved in the market. If you want to learn more about trading futures, please visit our website, DeCarly Trading. You can access several trading videos. You can sign up for a free trial of our newsletters. You can follow along some of the things that we're doing. And if you want to learn um, a little more in depth on option trading and hedging your strategies and coming up with uh, market analysis techniques and that sort of thing, I recommend higher probability commodity trading. You can find it at any major book outlet, but it is cheapest on Amazon, and Amazon has free shipping, so that's hard to beat. Again, we are DeCarly Trading. We are a futures and options brokerage service, and we'd love to hear from you.